Hello, so I'm Melanie Batz, CTO at Hobeo, and during this talk I will present and demonstrate the basics of Sirius Web. So I will show how it's possible to create a web modeler with Sirius Web without writing a single line of code. So to sum up what Sirius Web is, you need to know that first, Sirius Web is a framework to make it easy to create graphical collaborative editors to represent and edit data. And second, that Sirius Web relies on a modern stack with web technologies such as Spring and React. So, like Sirius Desktop, Sirius Web shares a low-code approach. It means that it provides a way to define domain-specific studios with as little code as possible. So, concretely, um, a domain-specific modeling workbench is composed of both a domain and a view, and the domain definition specifies the structure of your data, and the view definition specifies the structure of your visual editors. So both can be defined with no code in Sirius Web. And you should know also that Sirius Web is an extensible framework, but this topic will be addressed by two other talks this week, so I will talk only about the low-code part here. <clears throat> so during this talk, I will create from scratch a new graphical editor without any line of code. And as it is a one-on-one talk, and as I am, a, I really love Disney's movie, I'm sorry for you, but my example <laughs> is based on the one and red and one Dalmatian movies. So I will represent a city with places, persons, and dogs. <laughs> so let's go for the demo. Okay. So. Here you see that I'm in Sirius Web, I create a new project, and my first step would be to create a domain. So in my domain, my purpose is to define the different concept I want to work on. So I just give it a name, and I'm creating my domain. So I create a root for my model, this root would be the hearse, and I will create some new entities. So what the first entity I will create is a city, as I want to represent a city. It needs an attribute, which would be a name, and the earth is composed of cities. So I create a relation, a containment relation between earth and cities. Um, after that, I will create some other entities. The next one would be a person, because I want to create person and represent persons. Person needs some more attributes. The first one would be the first name. And then I will create a second one, a string one also, which would be the last name. And as in the movies, there's some persons that are kind and some are not really kind. I will create a boolean, which would be nasty, to show that someone would be nasty or not. And cities is composed of persons. So I will create like that my domain, and I will do that for lots of entities. So I create an earth with cities, and then I'm creating also places, because I want to represent the different places in my city. A place has name, size, garden, address. I have my person I already created. And I want also to represent dogs. There is two kinds of dogs, Dalmatians and Corgi. And so dog is an abstract concept. OK, so this is my domain. It's a quite a simple one. And what's cool is that with Sirius Web, I can directly, just after creating my domain and specifying it, I can use it in Sirius Web. So I have my final applications that would be show, used by my end user. And they can create an earth with cities. I create a first one, which would be London. And I can start to create my person. So I create Roger Radcliffe, and I could create a place. Roger will live in the Regent's Park house. Uh, this house is uh, 100 square meters, and as a garden. And the address of the house would be 42 Regent's Park Avenue. OK. One more thing I want to set is that Rogers lives in this Regent's Park house, and I need a Dalmatian, so I create a new Dalmatian, and my, my Dalmatian would be Pongo, because it's the most famous one, and Pongo to live needs 50 square meters in a house. So I said also that uh, Roger takes care of Pongo. So that's it. Directly, I can create my domain, I, can, I create my domain, and I can create an example, an instance of this domain in Serious Web. So what's next for me is that Sirius Web is a tool, is a framework to provide graphical tool. So I will create diagram now, and I will define my view as a diagram. And so my first diagram will represent the cities. Um, and this one will be an auto one. So 
first thing, I will just put a title. Uh, I will name it Cities Diagram. And I will say that it will be auto-layouted. So what I want to represent on this diagram now is I need to map the concept I have in my domain to s explain how this should be represented graphically in my diagram. So this is what I am doing here. I create a city node, which would represent my city concept in my domain. And what I am using here is I am using HQL. So you see in the expression, HQL is a small query language we provide to go through the model to get your data. So thanks to AQL, you can go through the different relation, get all the entities, and get all the elements you have instantiated in your model. Okay, so I reuse AQL also to say that on my label of my city, what I want to show is the name of my city. So directly, I just define the domain, the view, and I can use it in my end user diagram. And you see that as I have already created the London city, it appears in my diagram. I have a tool to create a new one, and that's cool. I have nothing else to define. Serious Web is doing all those things for me. But OK, the first look is not so good for me. What I would like is to change a little bit the style of my uh, city. So what I want is a label with a more purple color, uh, a background with, that would be white, and I want to reuse the same color for the border. I want the border with a little more rounded uh, corner and um, size a little bit uh, bigger. And I want also a font uh, that would be bigger. I want my label also to be bold and underlined. OK, so after configuring this in my view, I could try it again in my cities diagram, and you see that the style directly changed. I have nothing to deploy. It is done automatically for you. Now I want to add some more tools to get some more tools on my diagram to create the sub-nodes of uh, the cities. The first sub-node I want to represent is um, the person. So I'm creating a sub-node. And this one will represent the concept person, so I'm selecting the domain type that would be a person. And I will set again this different AQL expression to configure my sub-node. So this one, to find my persons, I need to go through the person's relations between the city and the person. And for the label, I don't want to see only the first name or the last name. I want a concatenation of both. And so I'm creating also one thing more. On the person, I want to be able to direct edit the label. And when this is done, I want that um, I get the string, I tokenize it according to the space, and for the first part, it would be my first name, and for the last part, it would be the last name. So here I'm creating a new tool which allows me to direct edit this um, label, and I'm setting the behavior of the tool just by saying that when I will get the value, I will tokenize it, get the first name, set the value to the first name feature and the last part to the last name feature. And that's it. I can try it again to see what it looks like in the hand. And no, I'm able to create a new person. I have a new tool in my palette. I can create a new person. This person would be named um, Anita Ratcliffe. And as you see, I just put Anita Ratcliffe, but the first name is Anita and Ratcliffe is the last name. Okay. Then, um, what I will do is I continue to improve this view with some more um, sub-nodes. And um, also, I said that for me, it's not so great to just have rectangle. So what I would like is to get an image to represent my, um, my user, my, my person. So I'm creating a style image and just set the shape to user. And if I go back to my sample, no. If I reopen it, you see that, oh, it's a cute uh, lots of little images to represent my, my person now. One more thing. As I said, I, as I, um, in the cities there is some kind people and some that are almost nasty. So what I will do is to create a conditional style to represent that graphically. So I'm creating a conditional style that will check the nasty boolean. And so on the HQL expression, I just need to check if someone is nasty or not. And so if someone is nasty, I will use another kind of image to represent it. This time, I will choose the shape Cruella, because this one is not a kind girl. And if I try it again, if I create, if I reopen the city's diagram, I could create a new person. By default, everyone is kind. 
and it could become nasty, like Krila Devile. And so I put her name, and I will declare that she's a nasty person. And you'll see that automatically the image is changing according to the values I have in my model. OK. The next one, uh, I will continue to improve my view like that. And this time, what I will represent is a place. So I create a new place subnode. I do that for you faster. And in this place node, what I want to show is that I have some more attributes. But instead of representing them as a freeform layout, I would like to see them like a list. So I'm creating all the subnodes I want to show in my place node. So I want to show the address. So I'm just saying that I would like to get from the place the address. Um, this would be my first subnode. And then I will create, I will set that this one will not be represented thanks to a rectangle, but with an icon label style. And I will create some other subnodes. So I will create two others. OK. Just remember, I, I, I need to replace the layout and to use the layout list for my container. And I created two other subnodes, which were for the size and the garden, and same using the style icon label. If we look like what it looks in the hand in my cities diagram, you see that now I have this beautiful container with all my list element, representing all the attributes I have defined in my um, place. OK. Next thing, um, I still continue to improve my view. And you see that for the both dogs, as dogs is an abstract concept, I created two subnodes, one for the Corgi, one for the Dalmatian. And what I want to do is now, uh, by default, ServiceWeb is providing um, a tool for you to create the, the, to create the different concept in your diagram. But now what I want to do is to change a little bit the behavior of this uh, tool. So I, I override this tool by recreating a node tool. And for the Corgi, what I want to do is, uh, when I create a new Corgi, what I will do is to change the behavior of this tool. So what I'm doing here is that I'm defining a new set value, a new create instance, because what I want is to create first a Corgi. And when this Corgi will be created, then it will be added to the dog's reference in my uh, model. I it will create a small variable which would be named new dog. And on this new dog element, automatically when the tool is applied, I want to set a new value for the name of the dog in order that I could define default values for this node. And so this time when the new dog is created, I will set a set value, I will use a set value and in the name feature, I will set the value expression as body because I want that my Corgi by, by default would be named Corgi, uh, would be named um, Buddy. So I reopen my cities diagram and now I can create a new Corgi. And you see that by default, the name is Buddy. So my tool is working. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is in this view, um, I want to be able to add a new kind of object until this, until now I just created node. I'm also able to create edges and to represent the relation between different uh, concepts of my model. Uh, I want to represent the takes care of relation. Remember, persons takes care of dogs. So I want to represent graphically this relation. Uh, this relation is not relying on the type, but it represents um, a link between a person Subnode with uh, two kind of dog or dogs node, so the Dalmatian subnode and the Corgi subnode. So I'm just declaring that the mappings that I would be linked by this hedge would be person from one side, and for the target, the Dalmatians and the Corgi. And so I need to um, I need to set also how I would find all those sources. So for the person, it would be easy. It's still the same. I'm using the cities and persons relation. And for the targets, as I would be on the person node, how I could find the dogs from there, it's easy also. I'm just using the takes care of relation. So I declare that to find all of my targets, it would be the takes care of relation, and it would get all the dogs. And so all the dogs would be all the Dalmatians and the Corgis. 
Uh, I will change a little bit my style of my hedge, so it would be a dashed line style, and I will change also the target arrow to use the input closed arrow. In my sample, what it looks like, if we reopen this diagram, you see now that there is this little hedge between, hedge between, between Roger and Pongo, and it shows that Roger takes care of Pongo. The next thing is I created node, I created edges, I created um, by default a tool uh, to create instance, uh, to create new object. What I want to know is to create a drop tool. So this kind of tool is um, applied when you take uh, an element from your explorer and you drag it to another element in the diagram. And so when you drop a person to a dog, I want to apply something and on my semantic model. So I will set a new value. Uh, what I want to do is to say that my takes care, takes care of relation will be set to the value of the selected element I have uh, selected in my diagram. Okay, so if we go back to try this tool, first I will reopen the cities diagram. I can use some tools that exist. So by default, Serious Web provides those great details view uh, without having to do anything for, for you. You can, we, we create it by default for you. You can edit the elements, it works. And I can also create, so I create a new Buckingham Palace uh, place. And I will create a new person thanks to the tool. Uh, I will name this person um, Betty. And I would say that Betty lives in uh, Buckingham Palace. And I will not use the details view to set my takes care of relation. Um, I will go back to Betty in my explorer. I take Betty and I drop it to Suzanne, the corgi. And now you see that it creates automatically uh, this relation between um, Roger, uh, between Betty and uh, Suzanne. So from now, I created uh, diagrams to represent my data, but what I want also is to be able to work on my data with another kind of representation. So no thanks to Serious Web, I can create that diagram, but I'm also able to create form. So here, what I want to do is to create a form on a place in order to be able to set some attributes of my place easier. Um, so I'm creating a new form, and a form will be able to, to get some widgets. So the first widget I want to use is a text one, and it will just represent the name of my place. And what's cool with the form description is that we have developed a, a WYSIWYG editor to create the form, and so you can drag and drop the different widgets, and it will show you how your form would look like in the end, directly from the description. So I create another text field, which would be the address of the place. So it's still the same way as what we do for the diagram to create and set um, the values of the, of the mapping. This time it's a text field, uh, it's a checkbox, radios, you have some kind of widgets that already exist. Some more will come. And so I created the name, the address, the size of my place. It will look like now on the end user tooling, we can create a new representation, and this time it would be a form. You see, it's not anymore a diagram, it's a form, and I can set the different values of my form here. I can use it automatically. Okay, so I'm just setting some values to show you that uh, it's a form <laughs> with text fields. Um, what I could do after that is to improve a little bit more my form, because here it's just text field, so it's great, but not so, not so good. So I will go back to my form, and now what I'm doing is that I will try to add some more widgets. So the first thing is I will add a label, and same as what we did for um, the node with conditional style in the diagram, I could do the same for forms. So here I will have a label with the value expressions that would be a little bit more complex, but not so much complex also. Um, I will just explain it. Um, I'm just, taking, I'm just taking all the people that are living in a house. i am got the relation takes care of to get all the dogs that are living in this house. And I'm getting all the space that all the dogs are needing, and I do some. So I'm just trying to find, if you have two dogs, what place you need to, to get those two dogs living with you. And I will compare that with the size of the place. And if 
it's greater than the size of the place, then it means for me that you have to move for the well-being of your dogs, and if it's okay, you still have room to adopt a dog. Um, I will set two kinds of uh, style for that. Uh, first would be green. I will have a green label if it's okay. And if the condition is not okay, what I will do is that I will represent uh, this label, but with another color. And as it's not okay, I will use the red one. Okay. So if we go back now to the, um, to the form, to the place form, um, what I want to show is this label. You see that when the size is zero, it's okay. There is no dog living in this place. That's okay. Uh, but for the Regent's Park house, there is already two dogs living uh, in this place. And if I change, for example, for Perdita, the space she needs, then it will be okay. I have a conditional style on my diagram, which I apply, and I have one in my form also. Um, what's next is I want also to show one more thing in this uh, form. I'm able, until now, I put my, all my widgets like this on the on different row. Here, what I want to use is um, um, a kind of container to be able to get not all my widgets like this, but uh, on the vertical. So I want to represent my independence of uh, place. Uh, first, I want to show the person from the left side. So I'm using a list widget for that. Um, I put the person label with some typos, it's better. And then uh, for the value, I'm just getting all the persons that are living in your house. And for the display, what I want to show is the first name and the last name of the person. And I don't want to be able to delete some person directly from this form. So you see that I am deciding how it looks like, I am deciding all the different tools I could apply or not. So it's really easy with Serious Web to create your forms and to set exactly the behavior you want for it. Um, I want also to represent the dogs, so I'm creating another container. This one would be in colon, so I want to represent the list of dogs that are living in the same house. I could uh, set the label for that. I could set the different values. The values would be uh, the number the, all my dogs have that are living with someone which takes care of them. And for the display name for my dog, I just want to see the name. And I want to be able to be able to delete a dog from uh, this form. Okay. Uh, so, what it looks like in the end. Uh, in the sample, if I open back my Regents Park form, you see that I have two persons, Roger and Anita, and two dogs, Pongo and Perdita. Uh, Perdita needs some more space, in fact, so when I change this, you see that the occupation change and the label change. If I remove Perdita, I still have some place, so it's okay. And one more thing I want to show you is I'm also able in the forms to add some charts. For example, a pie chart, that pie chart will show the occupation of the place because it's more graphical, more visual than just a label. Uh, so I'm creating a new pie chart widget. I'm setting that <coughs> this widget will represent the places, the free space. And the value expression is still the same, just from one side I'm showing the number of uh, the size of the, of the space needed by all the dogs, and on the other side what is vacant, what is the space vacant. So I will, show, I will see the occupied versus the vacant space, and so here it is. You see when I'm changing some, ver some, some, some data in my model, it will change also automatically the, you see the label changing, the pie chart is changing. If I'm removing someone, you see that the space is changing according to that. And if I change the pongo size also, you'll see the pie chart changing according to the data. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, what I could do also is to go one step further about that. So I will just go back to my slide just a second. Okay, just before continuing my demo, a small warning. 
Uh, this, part, this, this part of the demo might hurt some of you. So remember, it is just a demo, so it's okay to make some shortcuts for demo. <laughs> what I will show you now. Until now, uh, what, I showed was, what I showed you is how to create representations for data managed by Serious Web Server. I will go one step further now. And I have pre-installed on my server an open source extension we provide, which allows me to connect a serious web server to an external MySQL database. And so I'm now able to write data from serious web to a temporary database. Then I can use this data to configure a simulator written in Python, which simulates what occurs in my movie when Krilla and the arrangement are trying to catch the Dalmatians. Then, the results of this simulation are stored back in the temporary MySQL database. And finally, I can visualize the simulation results directly in Serious Web. So this is what I will show you now. So let's go to continue the demo. OK, so I have created two new representations in Serious Web. The first one would be a diagram. This one will represent my simulation configuration. Uh, it will represent two kind of, three kind of nodes. One would be the enters, and the second one would be the praise, and the last one would be the simulation, which represents the number of enters and praise that are, would be parameters of my Python simulation. Okay. <clears throat> um, so I just getting all, the, I, I'm representing the number of enters and praise with um, a, a small border node. And what I will show you now is that thanks to this little extension I have pre-installed on my server, I am able to execute directly SQL. This is what could stinking a little bit your eyes. So I'm able to execute a method which executes SQL directly from Serious Web. And this method, what it should do, it will just set the values needed my, by my Python simulator. So it will get all the Krila, the number of Krila and men. So it would be all the nasty person in my model. Uh, then I will get all the Dalmatians, so all the dogs that I have. And this tool will push this into my SQL database. On the other side, what I want to see is the results of my simulation. So I will represent that thanks to a form. It's quite easy. The first Two widget represents the number of uh, initial number of enters and the initial number of praise I have in my simulation, and the last one would be a bar chart, uh, and this bar chart is using uh, still the same extension, and this extension this time providing some AQL services which help me to directly get data from my SQL database. So these are the values, and the purpose of my bar chart is to see the evolution of the population according to my simulation. The population is the number of organisms, and the number of organisms is the number of Krilla and the number of uh, Dalmatian I have. Okay, so now if we run this simulation, uh, I'm just deleting everything in my database as it's a temporary database. And you see that I am adding some more Dalmatians to my example, so I would have now uh, seven Dalmatians in the end. I am adding some hunters, so this is, would be my simulation. You see that I have seven preys and four hunters. Uh, what I could show you is that at the beginning the table is empty. I apply my tool. If I go back to see my table, you see that the parameters of my simulator would be those. And now I can launch my simulation. So what my simulation is going to do in Python is just getting the values from the MySQL database, and then it will run the simulator. The simulator is a kind of uh, uh, prey and uh, enter simulation. In the, the red bubbles are my enters, the white bubbles are my Dalmatians, and you see that there is some orange bubbles that are my dog food because my Dalmatian needs to hit. <laughs> Um, and when there is a collision between bubbles, so if a white bubble encounter or an orange one, the f Dalmatian eats the dog food. And when the enters a red one collision to 
a white one, then it kills the Dalmatians. So, uh, my Python simulator is just running. You see that all the bubbles are moving in the cities, and that's cool. <laughs> and in the end, I have some traces about the collision, but it's not so easy to represent what it looks like and what's the result. So thanks to getting back the results to the, to the forms, and thanks to this bar chart, I can see that at the beginning, I have all my population, and in each tick of my simulation, you see that my population is decreasing. It means that the Dalmatians are catched by the hunters. Okay, so at the beginning I have everyone, and at the end, it just goes on. So, to sum up, what I showed you here was how with Sirius Web you can create for a new specific domain representations like diagrams and forms uh, with tools to manage the data and even how to connect to a Python simulator and all this without writing a single line of code, just few AQL and SQL expressions. So remember also that Sirius Web is extensible and modular, and so you can use Sirius Web to be integrated in your own application. It could be a cloud ID, like VS Code or CIA, a web application, and so on. For instance, here we did a quick integration of Sirius Web and Jupyter Notebook. I have no more time here to, to show you that, but uh, if you want to see this demo, you can come to me right after. And as I said before, you can use Sirius Web also to create your own domain-specific tool. And for instance, OBO is developing a new cloud-ready UML2 modeler based on Sirius Web. And this work is funded by the CEA list as part of an internal project named DeepLab. And the good news is that the first version of the Papyrus Web project will be released under the EPLv2 license beginning of next year. And that's it for me. And uh, so what's next for you now? Uh, there is two more talks about Sirius Web. One today is this afternoon at quarter past four, same room by Axel, about moving an existing application from Eclipse to VS Code, thanks to Sirius Web. And another one tomorrow morning, it will be about integrating Longium, which is a technology to create textual editor within Sirius Web. And uh, finally, if you want some more details about Sirius Web, do not hesitate to visit our booth. It's just in front of this door. And thank you. And if you have any questions, they would be welcome. So do you have questions? Yes. AQL, yes. Yes, the, the purpose is uh, we are providing a kind of completion, and this is, this is in development, so it will come soon, I feel, at, uh, in the first release we will do in 2023, it would be in January. So in January, you will have some completion for the AQL expression to help you to write them. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It depends. Um, it depends what you want to do because everything in, which is Sirius Desktop is not yet supported in Sirius Web. So it depends what you have used in Sirius Desktop. So some parts are already usable. We can take your whole design file and we can put it directly in Sirius Web and we can see what is missing. So we are supporting right now uh, some, some of the parts of the whole design, but for example, we are not supporting the sequence diagram and so on. So it depends what you used in your whole design file, but we have a support for the whole design to, go, to help you to go to Sirius Web. But some parts that are existing in Sirius Web will not exist in Sirius Desktop, like the integration, for example, of the chart I show you, it will not go back to the Sirius Desktop. So it really depends what you want to do. What, you want to, what I recommend is you can take your Sirius Desktop today, try it with Sirius Web, see what it's missing, and discuss with us. And we'll see how we could fill the gap.
an intersection. I'm sorry, I can't hear you very well. I understood that from serious web it's possible to go to the desktop unless uh, excluding some features, right? Uh, the idea is you can go from desktop to web, not so much from web to desktop. So in the web, we will add some more features that does not exist and that will not exist in desktop. So it's considered the web the final version. So you want the only one. Yes, we are, we are working hard on the web part, but we are continue to work on this desktop part also to maintain it in the future. So don't be afraid, we will keep serious desktop for a long time and we will work on it for a long time. But the new features will be developed in serious web. Do you have another question? No? Yeah? <laughs> The diagrams. So you can you see that for the not the, the integration with Jupyter Notebook, we have an API that allows you to get directly the the the, the diagram you want, and so you can get uh, SVG, PNG, and that's okay. Yeah, there is APIs for that. Okay. <laughs> yes, and there is a button. Yeah, yeah. There is also buttons directly in the serious web application where you can get the. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? Yes. Yes. With AQL, you can use directly services, and the services are just Java code, and they could rely on the EMF services, so EMF method. Other question? Okay. Thanks all. <laughs>